calculate the cell potential of a voltaic cell that uses silver and aluminum. Okay, a silver aluminum cell. So, what happens in a cell like that? We have silver ions, silver metal, aluminum ions, aluminum metal, and, because they said aqueous, water. So, who does stuff in this cell? If we go to our redox table, you read down the left side and up the right side to find out who your participants are going to be. Don't have fluorine, don't have lead, don't have acid permanganate, don't have gold, la da 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 da. Silver ions are our strongest oxidizer, if I'm not mistaken. And if we read up the right side, lithium, potassium, barium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, aluminum metal will be our SRA, our strongest reducer. So, our, oxidize, our oxidation reactor, sorry, our reduction reaction with our oxidizing agent is what I was thinking of, is this, you write it as is, because the silver ion is our oxidizing agent. That's our top reaction, and the bottom reaction where are we here? Which starts with aluminum metal. Goes Al into Al3. It oxidizes to aluminum ion and releases three electrons along the way. We could combine these, but I don't think we need to to answer their question. Their question is calculate the cell potential. So what are the voltages for these two half reactions? Silver is 0 0.80 volts comes up a lot. And aluminum to aluminum 3. Well, aluminum 3 to aluminum is minus 1.66 volts, but we're running this reaction in reverse. When you reverse a reaction, you reverse its voltage. This will be plus 1.66 for what we have. This is 1.66 volts. So when you add those reactions, you add their voltages, and we get 2.46 volts for a silver aluminum cell. Uh, the other thing they ask is, which is the oxidation and which is the reduction cell? How can we tell? I'll give you two perspectives on this, and you can use whichever one you like better. The one I usually use because it's faster, aluminum, sorry, silver, they both start with A, it's messing me up. Silver is going from plus one down to zero. One down to zero is a reduction. That's not how they originally used the word reduction, but it works for me and it's quick to see. Aluminum then must be the oxidation. The other way to think of that is if it's a metal, if it's at zero, that means it's in its solid form. If it's in its ion form, that means it's dissolving and crumbling and falling apart, which is what oxidation means to most non-chemists. It means iron is rusting. Iron zero turning into iron two or three is how iron rusts and disintegrates, and it's the same thing for any other metal. Oxidation means it went from zero to a higher state. And the other perspective I meant to show you is we can say Silver here is gaining electrons. It picks up this electron and now it's assimilated it. According to Leo says Gur, gaining electrons is reduction. And here we have aluminum losing electrons. And from Leo we get losing electrons is, yes, oxidation. So lots of ways you can get that right. You don't have to know them all. Pick your favorite and get good with it. If someone tries to teach you a different method that doesn't work for you, just smile politely and don't listen and keep using the way that works. Okay, what do we have here? A half cell linked to another half cell by way of a salt bridge is linked to another half cell. Okay, forgive me if I use the space up here for a diagram. What they're talking about is if you have a couple of cells here and we link them up with a salt bridge, We take the reaction here and the reaction here, and we add their voltages, and that gives us the overall reaction for this cell. We're not going to get a lot into it, but it turns out you could take another container and hook up another salt bridge, 
There should be liquid in all these containers or nothing's going to happen. And if you do that, now you're adding up the voltages for all of these. You can chain a whole bunch of half cells, and it can be three or two or five or a hundred, and you add up all their voltages. And that means you can stack half cells to produce extremely high voltages if you've got enough glassware and enough salt bridges. So if you've got a cell like a battery with a potential of one and a half volts, they're saying, how many of those would it take to get up to six volts? Well, it's exactly as easy as you're thinking it is. You just do six divided by 1.5. And in an electronic device, we really do this. If you have something like a flashlight and you take a AA battery, which, by the way, really does have a voltage of one and a half volts. This is a realistic number. And if you put that in the device tail to head with another battery, which gives another one and a half volts, if that's one and a half, and that's one and a half, if you stack them like this, you now have three volts. This is like one big three volt battery. And if you lay on another one, it contributes another one and a half volts, and now you're up to four and a half. And one more. When you stack four batteries like this, you could get up to six volts. In theory, there's no limit to how long you could keep that stack going, and you could get crazy voltages if you were willing to lay out that many batteries. This is called a series connection for batteries. Or we say the batteries are in series. When batteries are in series, you add up their voltages, which is nice. The bad news is all these batteries are going to run down at the same time and they'll all die at once. So you get a lot of voltage, but you don't get as much battery life when you stack batteries this way. Now, this is completely outside the course, but just in case you're interested, you may keep listening for a moment. The other way you can set up batteries, and you see this in some other devices, is you don't stack them, you put them side by side. They're not tail to head anymore, they're just all sitting side by side. This is called setting up batteries in parallel. In this case, each of these batteries is one and a half volts. Overall, you're only getting one and a half volts. There's no benefit to doing volt there's no benefit to the voltage if you do it this way. The good news though is that each of these batteries is only using a quarter of its endurance to maintain the one and a half volts. So the good thing about series is this gives you four times the voltage. The good thing about this setup is it will last four times longer.